I mean, this is kind of the crown jewel of the collection. At the time, this was the peak rallying in the US. The jump seats that came with the handles, this looks like an amusement park ride. Why would you have that in the car with you? Wait, there's more? Oh, there's more. more. Oh. A few extra things back here. I'm rolling. Here we are in beautiful, scenic, just outside of Camden, New Jersey on an excellent day. And other than the signature blue color on this door, there isn't really anything here to say what's on the other side. Hey, right. Bill. Come on in. Let me hit the lights for you. This right here is an off-site storage facility that Subaru has to keep all their really, really special cars. Our really good friend, Bill Stokes, who we've been working with for a lot of years, he runs Subaru Motorsports USA. This is also under his purview. He's gonna give us a little tour today. We're really, really hyped on this tour. Just in case you're wondering why this guy hasn't said anything yet. It's not because he's speechless, it's because he actually lost his voice after a long night of Craigslisting yeah. and doing other things that we don't know about. That, that's none of my business. So you'll all be like, yeah, I won't talk much this episode. Damn, you sounded rough. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what a cough job. For better or for worse, it's gonna be myself and Bill going through all these cars. Scott is gonna give some hand gestures here and there. You know he's gonna try and talk through it and sound like an old crusty sailor. So let's check these cars out. Where's Bill at? Bill? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank Good you very you. much for having us. Nice I want to start with this one because yeah. this car has been part of like the secret stash here at Subaru. And I've been asking them to drive this car for almost like definitely 16, 17 years now. No, the answer's still no. I mean, <laughs> I, I've driven it across a parking lot and that's the limit. And, and I'm you a, work. And here. I'm an employee. I mean, this is kind of the crown jewel of the collection. So the 22B was one of the very first truly special edition STI models. I was sold in Japan and there were a few sold for other markets as well. So 400 for the Japanese market and something in the range of 20 to 25 in other markets, but hand-built wide body, 2.2 liter engine versus the two liters that were the standard in the STIs at the time. All of the, all the, the trappings all and trimmings of like, of, of the highest of the high performance STI that was available at the time. These things were rated at 280 horsepower. Allegedly, they made quite a bit more. Yeah. In Japan, you couldn't publish a horsepower rating over 280 PS. Right, more. And that was a 2.2 liter. 2.2. 2.2 liter turbo. Yep. And it came with a five speed transmission at five the time. Five speed manual, DCCD. Oh. That's right. So, so these active diff. <laughs> these things are the real deal. Is that a dual glove box? Yeah, dual glove box. So Because it was like the, an the, airbag and they Yeah, made the JDM box. stuff. Oh, uh, nice. And the European spec stuff a lot of times got an upper glove box. Look at the amount of cubby space. Look, like how much you can store up there. That's because phones were huge back then. <laughs> Two at nine, perfect. We'll pop the hood. Dang. Aerospace division. Amazing seeing all this stuff that's OEM on this car. Man. Right, I mean, since it's right here, what is this next? Or do we just jump to this thing? Which is just so weird. What? Are you slurring? No, I have a, do you have have a cough drop, a cough drop in my mouth of a lozenger too. <laughs> this thing is insane. Zach, if he was here, mm -hmm. would probably choose this thing. This or, or the Brat, which... Or the Brat. Kyle is already... inside of. I'm just gonna shoot this car. All in. <laughs> so, Bill, what's the story behind this car? I mean, I see some, uh, some Baja writing on here. So this thing is a little bit of an oddball because we don't actually know a whole heck of a lot about it. It's an FF1 coupe. Okay. They, they sold very few of them. FF stood for front engine, front wheel drive. It was kind of the first car after the 360, which was the tiny little mini car that we right. first sold. Uh, apparently this thing was raced in the Baja 500 and the Mexican 1000 a few wow. years around that time. We mostly know what it is because we have the car and it's got the years that it raced in Baja painted on the side of it. Hey, that's a good way to keep records. I mean, full Baja spec, it was found on a a uh, junkyard lot in the Southwest, and uh, somebody called us up and said, hey, we have this car that says Subaru of America on the side. Do you want it? Does this belong <laughs> to you? We said, hell yes. We're, <laughs> we're not 100% sure what we're gonna do with it, but even as it sits, it's a crazy piece of history. This it is so rad. Predates our whole you know, rally thing. We love having it around. It's, it's awesome. possible that this was one of the first Subarus ever to hit gravel. As far as we know, yeah. It seems like it must have been. If you wanna see Travis Pastrana jump Snake River in this thing, comment below. Oh, <laughs> Right next to it. Yeah, imagine going 123 miles an hour across the desert. This thing. Nope. God. On the salt. 
Yep. With a Radwood winning livery. Oh, heck yeah. That didn't actually happen. I'm just guessing. So this so. is this is roughly a 1988 Subaru Justy. Uh, as far as we can tell, still holds the eye production land speed record at Bonneville. Uh, but these cars were sold with slightly larger engines in the U.S. This one was basically downgraded to a one liter so it could run in that class. Okay. And they basically tuned it to just spin up to ridiculous RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, and it did 123 miles an hour in, I believe, 1989. Uh, can we check under the hood of this? Absolutely, yeah, let's open it super up. Super interested. Yeah. I'm super excited to see what a one liter looks like. Yeah. Out the hood. There we go. If I'm remembering correctly, it's got motorcycle carbs on it. Hell yeah. There we go. <laughs> Whoa. So the craziest thing about this is that, just to give you an idea. <laughs> yeah. The craziest thing about this is it was built by some, some uh, technicians that worked here at Subaru headquarters kind of in their spare time and after hours. Whoa. This was definitely not built to the super high level that this is a real race car. car. This is a real race car. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it. They figured it out as it was happening. I'm not sure what this is, but I think it might be a cookie tin or something. Oh, oh my goodness. It's uh, This might be my favorite car in the whole collection. Yeah. Because, I mean, where, where else are you going to find a, a Subaru Justy with a land speed record? Right? Absolutely. Then back over to this side, we have this thing with little hints in the grill. You got the pinks around. You got the white wheels. Pink. Cherry blossom. Cherry blossom, blossom red. red. Yeah. I know. How am I correcting I you on that? Some background, though. I did the only Japanese car I've ever owned was a Blob I STI. And I also had a Blob I WRX that then I swapped to be an STI. And then Vinny also awesome. had a Blob I STI at some point. 30R, full build, everything. Hit him with the pictures. This was the pinnacle, the peak of Hawkeye STI. This is STI type RAR. WRX STI, spec C, type RAR. Wow. Lo longer longer the name, the faster the car. So we had done special edition uh, STI models in the past, the S20 models, the S201, 202, 203. And there was this, which was the stripped out more lightweight track special version, which was the RAR. Okay. The RAR was taking that to a little bit of a higher performance level with some of the, some of the performance parts from the S204. So okay. it's got the 320 PS power kit on it, the titanium exhaust, or this one's got the roof vent, had a um, aluminum trunk lid. It was about 100 pounds lighter. You could get it with fixed back bucket seats instead of the reclining buckets that were yep. standard. So this was the one that you buy if you're gonna drive it to the track thrash it, drive it home. The six pot front brakes, those aren't STI standard or the scalloped rotors or anything. No, so the rotors, I mean, you've got, you got two piece rotors and six pot calipers on a, a ostensi factory. ostensibly a street car, but Damn. obviously not. This is built for, for track work. Man, that's really, really cool. I always love these wheels too. These, these wheels were a super, super rare get. Yeah. Yeah, most of the RAs and spec C's and stuff like that, the really lightweight stuff would get the roof vent and no air conditioning. You would have the vent gotcha. if you ever needed it. Seeing one uh, done as meant versus like all the homebrew ones that you saw with the kits. I know. eBay roof vent kit yep. starts leaking. And honestly, out of the special Subarus, this is my favorite logo. That big pink arm. Oh, awesome. it's so good. Yeah. You said pink too. Yeah. Bill said pink it's, too. It, Thank you. Thank you, it's Bill. It's both. Well, also speaking of uh, green, Blue green. You guys probably recognize this thing. Stunt Junkies Subaru STI, as raced by Ken. We bought it, uh, Ken put it up for sale, and uh, it's a significant vehicle for us. What's unique about this car, most people know it as Ken's stunt, stunt Junkies car and his first victory car. He wanted 100 acre wood in it. Oh, in the first 100 acre win yeah, in this car. This is Ken's first rally That's winning really car. really cool. This car was actually originally a Bug Eye WRX that was built by Vermont Sports Car for a privateer and in 2004, they rented it back for an event, Snowdrift 2004, because they had this young kid named Travis Pastrana that they wanted to put in his very first rally event. So this was Travis's first rally car. No way. And Ken's first winning car, and the Stunt Junkies car. Oh my God. Oh. So if you look at the history of Subaru in rallying in the U.S., this is maybe the most significant car there is. That's if we would have known this province, we would have asked for more money. Oh, I, I, I don't remember the listing saying. <laughs> <laughs> also, Stunt Junkies was one of the first projects I ever worked with Ken on. The, the connection to rally and the connection to stunt work, all the you know the, the New Year's jump that Travis did, all the stuff that's happened with Jim Connor since then. So much of that ties into this car that it we felt like we had we had to have this car. So. Absolutely. At the time, this was the peak 
-hmm. of rallying in the U.S. Yep. But man, did these things move. And this is This was actually before the group and door panels met, had the pop out <laughs> from the cage, remember that? Yep. I only remember that because the first time I ever drove in one of Ken's cars, th like that was like the one thing I kept talking about. And he was like, you came all the way here and all you care about is door panels? That's so cool to you. <laughs> You've been weird forever. <laughs> Never change. You're gonna have to explain this. Thing. <laughs> we all know what it looks like, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You, don't, no. you can't tell me you don't see that. Well, it looks, it like, looks like a spaceship of a billionaire. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That looks like a dick. So this is like. called the X100, and this was a fuel economy demonstrator from back in the 70s. So this was intended to be a demonstration of how you could get 100 miles per gallon out of a car that could actually carry a passenger and use a production engine. So I, you know, it's got a very small production. I want to say like a. I don't think it was a 360 engine. I want to say it was an engine out of an FF1 or a Justy or something like that. Uh, but single seater, obviously big focus on aerodynamics. Yep. Mostly a concept car versus anything else. But the idea back then was like, what's the future going to look like in terms of high mileage cars? And because we were kind of an economy car maker at the time, we hadn't really focused on all wheel drive. Mm. This was you know, one interpretation of what that might look like. And it's got such a 70s like, like light gold. And I love the sticker on here. Car is equipped for installation of optional AC. <laughs> I don't think that's accurate, but I love the stick. <clears throat> Someone had a good laugh at that. Yep. If you look at this from up front, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it kind of looks like a piercing. Gotta yeah, get Prince Albert in there. I, th I had to get that out. This thing is cool though, man. Yeah. What a wild Batmobile looking thing. A couple of S209s over yeah. in this direction. These two look a little familiar. Uh, so this is Bucky Lassick's 2021 One Lap of America car. And we've also got uh, Travis Estrana's 2019 one lap car, which is a Type RA. Two S209s here, the blue one and then the white one behind it are number one in the production run and number 209, the last one in the production run. Bill was extremely generous in letting us have our way with the prototype pre-production S209. Some of that's coming up a little bit later, okay. but these are phenomenal cars, so much grip. So while we're on the subject of bringing the WRX to America, take a look at this thing, another GC. So this is another one of those cars that was built kind of as a, as a demonstration vehicle to show Subarus and WRXs could be fun and sporty. Yeah. <laughs> so this, is the, this is called the 2.5 RX, uh, but it's got a turbo kit on it, big front mount intercooler, wheels and tires, or caro seats, some add-on uh, body parts and stuff to kind of make it look the part. Yeah. The idea was to, to show some of those kids that had Hondas and Nissans and stuff around that time. Uh, that, hey, you can modify a Subaru and make them really fun. Got you. We wanted and, a piece of that market a little bit. And despite that we all call it a GC8, it's technically not a GC8. Right. right? So this is this is technically a GM6. That C doesn't mean coupe. It, it's the the chassis code for a sedan. So G you know. so GM is the coupe. Everything GC. I thought I did, knew about things people didn't know, I actually don't know. Hero was thinking I'm a Subaru nerd. Yeah, no. no. Not even close. Extra levels to this shit. Yeah. Anyway, pop the hood on the GC8. Before you do it's, real quick, look at this. How Fast and the Furious. Oh, so fast and Nopey furious. Nights. Lexan. Yeah. Car Show era and Lexan. He's that aged really well. And turbo pipe. Yeah, you gotta know. All right. So obviously by the acres of intercooler piping, you can tell this is a, <laughs> early, yeah, an early turbo early kit. kit. Yeah. This was back in the day where the more pipe you had, the better. Look at this turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, right? 490s equals a stop. <laughs> Still cool though. I mean, back then seeing this thing in the US, mm -hmm. there were some people that were trying to cobble together turbo kits for these things. But it was super homebrew <coughs> stuff. So for this yep. to come from you guys, that's pretty rad. Factory strut bar, factory option in Japan, not available in the US at the time, but we got some of that stuff. Which, that looks the same as the one from the 22B? It is, it is the same same bar that's as 22B. That's sick. Ona Speed wheels, which are super period so correct. So era oh, correct, I love right that. down to the fitment and the yeah. offset. By the Ooh, way, recess. And let's clarify for the viewer. When you say that's period correct, you mean it's of the era. When you say it's so period correct means that it's a euphemism for that wheel is ugly. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one would cool run this. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah Recaro leather seats inside. Um, you know, 22B replica wing out back. You were a tuner who yeah. was building a and before people were really building these cars. Um, Check out this exhaust tip. Look at that. That's how you do Dang. it. Yeah, that's the old days. Get your fist in there if you need to. The dunk. You got a megaphone. It. Yes. This is super 90s hot.
So then, on the complete opposite side of that spectrum. This was a great thing. Oh, uh, what an example of one. I'm sure says, Subaru still has lawsuits open for the back seats on these things. I mean, all right, let's talk about the back seats a little bit. I mean, this is like, the when you seats. think Subaru Brat, it's this. It's the jump seats that came with the handles. This looks like an amusement park ride yep. in like Action Park, though. Just go to Action Park, there's no other park like it. It's great. These are the most amazing rides in the world. I love it here. I mean, That's a I great Action Park reference, by the way, as a New Jersey thank resident. You. Yeah, 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 thank yeah, you. Yeah. The least yeah. safe. Did you ever go to Action Park as a no. kid? No, I, I Did grew you up. Go? No, I didn't go. My wife I'm did. I'm the only one who went. It's because everyone you knew who went is now dead. They're dead. Right. <laughs> These things were uh, were not particularly safe, but they were sold with jump seats in the bed. Uh, there's a there's a series of laws on the books uh, in the U.S. about the importation of, of light trucks and vans. Okay. And basically, there are a bunch of uh, tariffs and penalties about bringing in trucks and vans from overseas. You can get a vehicle classed as a, as a passenger vehicle as opposed to a truck, you get around some, some taxes that were levied against Europe and Japan. These, these types of things were a little bit of a boondoggle to get around the classification of this as a light truck because, hey, it's got four seats, it's a passenger vehicle. But the chicken tax was basically retribution because we were getting taxed. Our poultry was so inexpensive right. in and Europe. Chicken. So we were selling poultry like crazy everywhere and we, no one could keep up with our poultry numbers. Mm -hmm. So they taxed us. US said, okay, fine, you can't sell trucks in America yeah. without a huge tax, which well, is one of the reasons why we never got a lot of the like European and also Japanese trucks early on. Crazy chicken tax. Automotive trivia. So okay. Pop the hood as a Volkswagen guy that looks like a classic VW Tartan. I think yep. you guys stole it. Nice. Oh, I love that old school style steering wheel. I mean, this is really where it's at. This is what it's about with old Subaru yeah. before the EJ <laughs> came along. Yes. It's about the engine bay mounted spare, which. Because you know what's, you know what's nice? Getting flat on the side of the road and then dealing with a hot wheel. Mm -hmm. But hey, once you get it on, you have a nice heat cycled rubber tire. <laughs> that is true, it is, is heat cycled. Yeah. Which is yeah. always cracked and yeah, probably just, not holding much air. But it does a good job so of hiding loud. how small the engine was. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where is Still, the engine? Kind of a red. Yeah, thing. it's somewhere down there underneath that full size spare tire. All right, let's talk about this because I will tell you, I would lose Who Wants to Not Be a Millionaire Automotive Edition. <laughs> on the RX Turbo, because yeah. I don't know anything about this car. This, this is a 1988 RX Turbo. Like a WRX from a weird alternate universe of the 80s. Amazing hubcaps. Oh, no, that, these wheels are... Oh, it's so, so good. Someone has to make a um, version someone, of those. I heard we got wheel companies now. Yeah. We have the means. But, um, so this was, this was basically a, you know, kind of the concept of a WRX, but without all the performance, because it had a heck of a lot less power. Mm. You've got a lever to shift into four-wheel drive. Yeah, and then you've got high and low, so it's really a much more truck-like. And truck -like. a diff lock. Yeah, it's I much mean, more truck-like. I mean, at the time, this thing was a spaceship. Yeah. Oh, it smells like the 80s. Oh, the headliner is fresh. Oh, my God. Peep the headliner. I got to sit in it because I might buy one if I can find one. Wow, y'all already won Radwood, huh? Yep. Are they hard to find? Like, how many are there? I have no idea how many, but they were they were sold is in it very for sale? small numbers. This one is definitely not for sale, no. There's a few out there, though. <laughs> I love this let era me, of cars. Me. I love this era of cars because this was what I call the, the flex era, because you had to hit the door full time, all-wheel drive, RX. There's yeah. probably a turbo logo on back, I'm guessing. Oh, with the plate. So many good graphics on this yeah. thing. Oh my god. It's no better. It's 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 no worse than my rabbit. Have Subaru be like off on the side of the wheel right. down to the bottom Absolutely. and it wasn't a big Absolutely. deal. No, no. Symmetry was not important in the 80s. Sim turbo, turbo, and then it has a graphic of a turbo. Pop the hood. I'm really kind of bummed that you're able to talk again. <laughs> it's yep. Ah, spare tire up top. This was this was about the end of the spare tire. Look at that adorable manifold. It's about the same size as the power steering reservoir. Yeah. Yo, if you have an RX turbo. DM me. I kind of want one of these. We got a 78 Brat here, which we just talked about. A couple of early 80s GLs with the Cyclops headlight. What? I, when we were choosing grills, oh, I guess we got the later generation. Yeah. Cyclops yeah, headlight? Cyclops headlight. So these were, these were a little extra safety <laughs> that you're driving sick. it. Sick. And, I've uh, never seen that. There's a button in the, in the cabin. You switch on the third headlight. <laughs> yeah, so quirky. I want to build a new features. version of that on a truck like a big Raptor where the whole grill comes <laughs> up and it's just like 17 <laughs> light bars underneath. That would be- that Garage would be door style. Yeah. yeah. A couple of um, early 80s GLs with the plaid interior. Love that. Very, very 80s. 
And you can see the uh, the progression in sticker technology because we had a little bit of an <laughs> earlier car here. Yeah, this with man. the sport technology. Progression. Man's got jokes. Progression of sticker technology. <laughs> you gotta love these though, like these gradient sport stripes. So, I have so a perfect. Pinterest full of this stuff. Yeah, yes. I love it. That's in the 70s and the 80s. We didn't have car names. Like it was just Subaru GL, Subaru Three Door, Subaru DL, Subaru Wagon, stuff like mm. that. But if you ever look for old Subarus on Craigslist and stuff, it's always like GL, DL, RX, Wagon, Hatchback, and that's it. This starts as front wheel drive, and you have a lever that turns it to all wheel drive. Yep. yep. Dual range. So yeah, dual range, which is obviously more of a truck thing. You don't right. see those on, on cars very much anymore. But they're very utilitarian yeah. at the time. And one little detail that, um, that you may have spotted, white wheels that you see on these, mm -hmm. they were kind of a signature four-wheel drive indicator. So like the, mm. the models that didn't come standard with four-wheel drive, because not uh. everything did, they didn't get the white, the white mm. standard eight-spoke wheel that said this is an all-wheel drive. You're driving wheel. down, you see the silver wheels, you're like peasants. Yeah. <laughs> I got the white wheels. I got the four-wheel drive. Um, this so, thing, it may look... I'd From the distance, it may look a little pedestrian, but it was the mid 2000s sleepers. It's one of the coolest cars. Mm -hmm. This thing is so sick. This Basically. is a, a legacy spec B, right? So, Man. <laughs> so this was number one of the production run of five. By the way, by the way, I taught Ken Block how to do center axis donuts in the one lap car. Just I'm throwing that out there. Note to the, <laughs> <laughs> note to the art department. <laughs> T-shirt, Scotto taught Ken Block to center axis. Wow. This one had the, the first year brick red leather interior, oh, which is so, only on year so, one. So good. So good. Cars got six gearboxes. They got basically the STI gearbox without the DCCD. But I got I got to look on yeah, this thing. Just because you'd already know what this looks like. Those really nice, too. They do. I mean, this was your guys' run at like a BMW. At the exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is an awesome car. But, uh, it really and is. you know what premium is? Plastic, so you can't see. The they engine. were like, "What's BMW nothing, doing to like bring?" Nothing says I own a nice car yeah. than not being yeah. able to see the engine. That, All right, and then there's this thing. This is an XT. So uh, this thing, I mean, I don't even know what to say about it other than look at it. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It looks like a. Would just, you just open the door? Yeah. Look at oh, the interior is even the best. Look, the look at this. First of all, sick. you got a two-piece door handle for aerodynamic effect. Look at that. Beautiful. And then inside, you've got the full fighter jet cockpit style with the uh, oh, pistol the grip shifter. Yes, the pistol got, grip shifter, the off-center steering yeah, wheel. Yeah, you got the steering wheel that looks like a gun. All those buttons that, you know, who even knows what most of those do. Full 80s graphics, mesh seats, like just amazing, ridiculous stuff. Again, the main thing about it was just the fact that it looked so much like a doorstop. It was full 80s wedge style with the pop-up headlights and everything. I just noticed this, electro-pneumatic suspension with height control. And Before we, a uh, place to strap down your luggage. Right, the disappearing B-pillar mm -hmm. makes it just look like such a, at the time, Big, this Look was, at the glass house. It's this like, is a spaceship. Oh, mono wiper? Yeah, mono wow. wiper. Wow. And it has the thing, right? So it goes up and over, like the, the, the E190. The one with the corners, yeah. yeah. There's so much history pre-STI that I just don't really, uh, never even thought of. Yeah. But there was an era where Subarus were these like super, super high technology kind of crazy turbo spaceship looking thing. A lot of unusual stuff happened around. Yeah. Speaking of the rally connection, this is what both, this is what Ron, myself, Vinny, I don't know, probably a bunch of other people at Hoonigan we don't even know about had. I had this color, this headlight configuration, everything. This was it, this too. The year is 2006, Thursday blasting on the radio. Yep. You got a snowboard rack on top, four boards, you and your homies hitting up Mountain Creek. What a vibe. Slightly sad, but still Slightly psyched. Slightly sad, but still <laughs> psyched. You got the beanie with the little brim. Yep. Oh, what an error. You got the big what scoop. The big. tsunami scoop, that, that tsunami. wave that's about to break over. That, what a, what an offensive thing. Yeah. That was massive to have on there at the time. Couple you could read STI on the intercooler yeah. through there. You know, as far as street cars go at the time, there was nothing cooler. Fog light pods. The gold wheels, the Brembos. You even had like a weird like blister canard yep. on the side. Yep. All of the rally things 
in one package that you could buy from the dealer. You had active center diff, you had launch control that you had to unlock with a little something, but it had launch control. It had it. In not, the for, thing. not for us. Had pop it. the hood. Yeah, we're pop the hood. The JDM models had anti lag from the factory. The one thing is, though, is they'll never be worth anything. So if you have one, you should Please sell, to us sell them to us. Please sell them to us. Honestly, they'll never go up. We value. will do you an absolute favor and take them off your hands. So this specific car is 3,300 miles, super clean. Like this is our, this is our keeper. I mean, we, yeah. These cars are so raw. It's just, it's insane to drive one. And, yeah. you know, it, was, it was just about being stupidly fast at that, at that Short point ratios, just blasting through gears. So you go from the 04, the first year we got the STI to, this is an 06? This is an 06. Which, In my opinion, the 06 is the better car for a couple right. of reasons. One, you got the grayed out taillights instead of the chrome ones, which uh, were a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. yep, and yep, there's yep. a little bit more aluminum in the suspension on this one than there was in the 07. Oh, and it had like the really good motor package. Yep. This was it. Yep. But then we go from these to, I mean, the daddy of Subaru in rally, yep. right? I mean, the Subaru Legacy, this is an RS. This is just a, a Legacy Turbo sedan, but this is the first Turbo EJ powered oh, Subaru cool. in the US. Uh, those 2.2 liter closed deck blocks are really desirable for people doing high power builds now because right. they went to uh, semi-closed and open deck blocks right. later, but these 2.2s are really, really strong. And yeah, this was the original you know, sort of OG Subaru rally car in the WRC driven by Colin McRae. Yep. First rally winner for Subaru, first car to wear the 555 livery for Subaru, and then obviously made way for the Impreza later, which ended up winning championships. And These were the Group A cars. These were the cars that looked like a pedestrian grocery getter Camry, and it's just doing heroic stuff. But the early ones literally looked like you just like drove it off like yeah. dealership, put like wheels on it, and mud flaps. Yeah, such a cool, cool vehicle. I've said cool. Seven million times. I'm nerdy. <laughs> count the cools, editor. No, count please don't count the cools. You have one of these in a nice condition. Ron might be looking for one. We just do these shows to buy these. I mean, that's yeah. that's facts. I lost my voice again. I just when I was getting it back. <laughs> this, this right yes. here. <clears throat> so this is what we call the Mountain Rescue Forester, and this was kind of early overlanding style, where we showed off some of the stuff that people do with Jeeps mm. and Forerunners and things like that as a way of doing this it. This is the archetype road. of yeah. every Subaru Overland yes. right here. All those kids yeah. with methods on their, on their cross tracks. This, and this was also to show off our partnership with the National Ski Patrol around that time. So it's got some locking storage on the, uh, on the rear windows if you want to open up that little panel right there. Whoa, yeah. that's cool. Yep. I really like the, uh, the rear window delete too. The passenger window delete. Oh, there's no door handle even. It's closed off. Yep. Oh, there's like a full, that, look in the back, that's why. Clean interior for a mountain rescue thing. Yeah, I think there's oxygen tanks back there and stuff oh. too, right? So this is a, uh, this is a sandbar fire truck. I wanna say from around 1990, this is actually owned by one of our executives. So we've got a couple of guys that are, that are like hardcore collectors of yeah. JDM stuff, but this is an actual used fire truck. Obviously in cities in Japan where the streets are super narrow, right. if you've got fires, there's no way to get like a big American style fire truck down there. So they've got these sort of converted um, not quite case size, but but very small. Just about yeah. fire trucks. I think out here in California and even in the U.S. and mountainous areas, people have started buying these up mm -hmm. because on your own property, if there's fires going on around you, these are way easier to own and get to and put out a little fire here or there. This one's got push button four wheel drive and everything. Ah, on manual. the shifter, yeah. that's so rad. Property, you need to move move some stuff around or fight fires. You can get one of these. Red button four. Don't push the red button. Kyle. Kyle appearing from the wild. We're taking you off the shoot real quick. Kyle heard that there was a vehicle he could sleep in, and he showed up. Well, you got to get here. Hand the camera off. Here, I'll grab Hands it. I'll grab it. Let me grab it. There you go. There you go. There you All go. right. Ask your questions. All right. You're making model. Well, it's a Subaru Brat. Uh, I want to say this is like an 82-ish car. Obviously, the hook here is that there's a there's an artist who built basically a full custom camper with the pop-up rig and the uh, the interior uh, bunks and the uh, the stove, the camping stove. You can sleep in it, you can cook in it, you can drive it, everything you need. So sell your house, buy a brand. Kyle's going to put that to the test. Yeah. This yeah. man has an Astro van that he's lived in for a little bit of time. Yeah. He lives in a trailer right now. Yeah. So he knows vehicular lifestyle. What I like uh, is th there's a roof rack and it extends up. 
makes a huge difference. Right, your new get sleeping in, situation. Can you get in inside? Bed. Yeah, of course. Get inside. Should we open up the Let's back there? Let's take a whiff. What does it smell like? Oh, wow. Explain to the people at home. It smells like a cabin. Yeah. Yeah. How big? Got a little cup. Now, just, just be aware, this is maybe the slowest car here, yeah, right? Because it weighs that. so much more than a brat was right. ever supposed to weigh. Right. Full wood. But you look, you have like an actual wood, wood burning stove in here. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So Let's run, open the, uh, wow. Look at that baby open wood stove. Open the what? Stove. Open the door and open the push through glass. The tiniest stove <laughs> ever. Would you go to sleep with that burning next to you? Yeah, I mean, that's a baby fire. You'd be yeah. fine. I think we figured it out. Yeah, yeah, because now you got Because now you have the headroom head above you. Which is, which is a big deal. There you go, bud. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Luxury. You can also sleep upstairs. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like my van setup might be a little better, though. Oh. That's a big old whole grain pancake right there for you, bud. I'm not biased. No. no. If this was an Astro van, I'd like it a lot more, but... <laughs> Is this an Astro van? It'd be a lot cooler if it was. Yeah. <laughs> so back through here, we have the Land of Misfit Toys. The first, kind of an interesting piece. This is a Fuji Rabbit scooter. Before the Subaru brand was sold in the U.S., the, uh, you know, the founders of Subaru, the guys who were intending to kind of create Subaru, they were originally planning to go to Japan and get a contract to sell these scooters in the U.S. market. Which was Bricklin, right? This was Malcolm Bricklin, yeah. Who also has his name on one of the ugliest kit cars ever built. The, the Bricklin SV1, yes. And on Yugo. So he was, he, wow. was, he was very much- Well, one out of three, one out of three ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. The joke that we have here at Subaru is that uh, our company was kind of a, was kind of a scam that turned into a viable business by accident. <laughs> was that Bricklin was going to Japan to, to get a license to sell some of these Fuji Rabbit scooters in the US. And they basically told them that they weren't gonna sell the Rabbit scooter anymore. They were taking it out of production. But they had some of these little cars sitting there and he was like, well, I'll just take some of those. So he set up a distributorship and started selling these little tiny Subaru 360 mini cars in the US around 1967, 1968. And by tiny, you mean? Micro. Like catastrophically small. Like can I try to fit in this or is this one too valuable? Uh, there is. Let's see if we can make this work. Now, the one thing that might work in our, in our advantage is the suicide doors. So oh, that's going to make Ooh. it a lot easier. All right. Let's see if you can. Oh, yeah. That's going to be. Now, watch the, watch the squat as this thing takes the weight. <laughs> <laughs> He's got us taking this thing from the full there he suspension goes. travel. Get that second leg in. This thing is yeah. making noises. Like, I don't want to be in this. I think if I drove from the passenger seat, <laughs> I could do it. I think if you drove from the back seat, you might actually be good. Let's get this thing close. You ready? There it is. No. <laughs> yes. God. Why would you have that in the car with you? You know, it's a good, like, Will Scotto fit when he has to yeah. help his own leg out. <laughs> Wait, there's more? Oh, there's, there's more. more. Oh. A few extra things back here. The oh. SVX, oh. Yes. a.k.a. Yes. I was, yeah. oh, this is the king man. of the back room here. This is our, our very minty oh. SVX. What a shape. And I mean, these are, these are totally unlike anything else we made because this was supposed to be part of that 90s Japanese bubble era Grand Tours, the, uh, you know, the, the Supra, the Skyline, obviously mm -hmm. in Japan, the 300ZX twin turbo. They were big, heavy, lots of tech, lots of power. Mm -hmm. and lots this was of the taillights on the quarter lots panel. Lots of taillight. The center cut window. Yep. Look at that situation. Yeah, because there's so much glass in this thing that the whole window won't fit into the right, door. So you right. got to have a small one. You know, actually, this so is that's giving like, me. That's like race. I mean, like Lamborghinis are like that. Yeah. Right. This is giving me RX vibes. Yeah, there's. There's a, like, a serious connection in the shape. Like this was intended to be kind of the successor to the XT. Got you. Um, so there's, there was the, the XT, the RX, both kind of that wedge. And then yep. this was much more smoothed out 90s style. Yep, yep, yep. Showed up in, in uh, 90s. When CAD started 92. letting you do curves. Yeah, I mean, look at Super comfy, super heavy. Yeah. Four speed auto and a 3.3 liter six up front. Luxury Louis grand door. tour. I mean, it's a big door. Yeah. Great engine, super smooth. Yeah. Uh, but they tended to, to go through those four speed autos. Uh, they were pretty, NA, right? Pretty quickly. They were, yeah, naturally aspirated 3.3 liters. The colors. I think we want to see David Coleman's more color. Oh, hell car. yeah. Impreza. I remember this from the magazine. Yeah, this, this one is, is one of my favorites just because of how kind of obscure it is and how significant it is. 
But this so, was, I want to say... I, I got to catch everybody up. So for those of you who don't remember pre-YouTube, there were these things, they were called magazines, right? We made <laughs> them from dead trees, and we stapled them together. Sometimes they perfect. Very not woke. And, uh, yeah, and it was the only connection that a lot of us had to car culture. Like, before the internet, it really was all there was. And then there were email lists and then forums, and now you guys are spoiled. You get everything. But there was a guy named David Coleman who worked at Sport Compact Car, and a lot of us just like, we just ate up everything this dude wrote because he actually knew what the fuck he was talking about. And he raced rally. Mm -hmm. Yep. He was a rally driver. He did a lot of road racing stuff. He had a 510. I think he drove uh, a Subaru in rally as well, maybe at some point. So I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if he ever drove a Subaru in any competitive rally situations. Mm -hmm. he, they had a couple of Project Subarus at SCC back That's in the it. day. They That's had, it. They had yeah. a Project 2.5 RS, and then they yep. had a Project, bu uh, yeah, Bug Eye WRX. Uh, but this was because, by the way, back in that day, you could see, you could tell the difference between an enthusiast if they read Super Street or Versus Spock Combat SCC. Car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Super Street was like the body kits, Shogun, Underglow, yeah, yeah. Lexan and like Hood. if you were an SEC reader, you were like, oh, I might be like, I might be actually an enthusiast. And if you read none of that and only read Grassroots Motorsports. You were the real deal. Yeah, you were an autocrosser. Yeah, you were an autocrosser. So this was a uh, this this car, I believe, ran in the 2000 One Lap of America and was driven by Dave Coleman. I, I want to say somebody else from SEC at the time. So these things are cool. The um, not a lot of people know about the WRX RAs, but there was an STI mm -hmm. RA, and then there was also at certain model years WRX RA. Oh. So you get unpainted mirrors, unpainted door handles, you know, no no interior content at all, uh, but all of the you know, all the good stuff if you wanted to convert it to rally or convert it to circuit racing. Um, this one didn't get, you know, the full power package or the, the nicer brakes or anything like that, but... Did get did. a factory Nardi steering wheel. Gotta love the Nardi. This little has a, if I remember correctly, a Phillips head unit. Yeah. Like... Phillips navigation head unit, which yeah. I assume was put in by the guys running one Oh, it was definitely put lap. in because at that time, like, you know, you're finishing up. If you don't know what One Lap of America is, um, it was really big back in the day. It still it still happens. You guys have ran it recently, right? Yeah. With Bucky, Travis has ran it. But it was the idea of like racing across multiple racetracks across the country. So you would race sometimes twice in a day at two different tracks. And then you'd have to get all your stuff back in the car. You couldn't carry anything. It's kind of like drag week, but for road mm. racers. Yeah. It's all that stuff over there. That's the Boneyard. So that's oh, a sweet. Oh. Hey. They have their own death row. They got their they own, have own death, death row with Subaru. Death row. Here's a Scotto special right here if you want to oh. uncover this thing. 360 van. 360 van. I mean, it can only be one thing. It can only be one thing in that shape. It's the size of a van, but a quarter scale. Yeah. Why but, do I feel like I'll fit in this one? Here. We're going to try. Let's you're get you, a, let's get you're you in this thing. You're a fascinating gentleman. And I use that term loosely. I mean, egress is like a little easier, but yeah, I don't. All right. That's about it. I can ride in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is incredible. Oh. You're, oh my God. Yeah, you're longer than the I'm wheelbase. Longer than the wheelbase. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a one scotto wheelbase. <laughs> That's a good measure, measuring yeah. unit. All right, so unfortunately, Bill told us that because it's raining, we can't drive these cars, which seems weird because they're super yeah. is. It's going on 20 years I've been asking to drive this thing and Bill, the predecessor before, like everybody has come up with an excuse not to drive them. We should ask Low. Next time we're here, can we drive a drive a blah by? We will work you Start low, you work plan. your way up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do it without crashing. I'm okay with that. Yeah, this thing I mean, th this too would be a. That would be phenomenal. This is the fastest car here. Huh. Okay, then we want to drive this. Yep. That's what we want to <laughs> yes, do. Yes, please. All right, so if you want either Ron or myself or both of us to drive this thing that's just got too many letters after its name. Go head over, Subaru Motorsport USA, their Instagram, and just, just annihilate the comment well. Just Relentless. Let Ron Relentless. and Scotto drive it. I don't know what I'm signing up for here. <laughs> yes, you do. You know exactly <laughs> what again, you're signing Bill. up for here. Thanks again, Bill. Oh, wait, there's one more. All right, so you know how we were saying that Bill is a real enthusiast because he drives a real enthusiast car? Well, here it is. 2.5 RS, yep. and you got the coupe. I got the coupe. It was the last year of the coupe, and I just loved the two-door body style. I, I don't know. I mean, I love GDs. They're fantastic cars. They're they're iconic. But I always wanted that two-door Colin McRae 22B style. Of course. Even if I couldn't get the wide body, I just wanted that two-door look. And you have it specked out super nice. You got the Pro Drive bits, steering wheel, shift knob, tasteful mods. Yeah. Tasteful mods. Yeah. This is a. I mean, this is a driver. I drive it 
in the spring, summer, and fall, I probably drive it two to three days a week. US spec engine, uh, 2.0 liter, uh, basically a 2004 WRX engine underneath with a bolt-on STI. Oh, so it is swapped? It is swapped. Oh, hell yeah. Hey. Off the hood. What I didn't know it was swapped, What do you Bill? think this is, man? What Come on. The Pro Drive uh, clamps. Five. It's got, got the, the P1 uh, wing. raised wheels. I swapped this thing in 2009. Nice. We're on second short block because that's, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> F34, ball bearing JDM STI turbo. Great turbo. Yeah, great, great turbo. turbo. Yeah. Spools a little faster than the, the VF30. But has good but, power. But awesome. It's basically the whole ProDrive catalog circa 2005 thrown at it. Nice. Full nostalgia bomb. Full Bill nostalgia showed bomb. up. Bill showed up. He drove this to Annapolis when we were filming Jim Conn 2020. And he showed up with this, and everyone was more interested in this than anything else <laughs> going actual on. Jim Jumping a canal, yeah. no. Air Slayer. Yeah. Nah, it didn't matter. Everyone was like, damn. Nice. Yes. You could just keep driving. Or I could just keep driving it. Like that's the that's the problem. I don't want to stop driving it. Hell yeah, Bill. You're the man. Thanks Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks again, for, dude. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having Love us. Love having you guys. Next time let us drive something. Hell yeah, we will. Oh boy. That is an aggressive shift lever. This looks like a ride at Disneyland. Yeah. So this is called the Roadster concept, it's like and it's basically a Justy with else. a little fiberglass body. Yeah, it's just a Justy. It's really tiny, and I don't know if it comes through on the video, but these mirrors. These things are so small. If you know, you know. Everybody put those on like there, like, oh, I need to, whoop, well, that's.